great to have you with us tonight. Guys, let's dive straight into it and what has been making front page news for the last couple of days and continues tonight is this deluge, this drought breaking, fire extinguishing deluge that is uh, all up and down the east coast and with some of the chaos, uh, sorry, with some of the blessing of this rain has come a little bit of chaos but we'll talk about that in more detail. Let's start with looking at the coverage on the front page of the Australian newspaper. The headline there, chaos reigns as deluge ends the fire crisis. The story from Lachlan Moffat Gray and there's a there's a story, uh, sorry, a picture there of a, a tree, I think it's fallen down on a car somewhere in Sydney. Uh, the heaviest rains in more than two decades have swamped large tracts of New South Wales and Queensland, bringing a, a dramatic end to the bushfire season, but leaving more than 100,000 residents across two states without power as authorities warn that the worst of the deluge is still to come. Now, Scott, I might start with you on this. Um, we... we, mm -hmm. we we acknowledge that the rain uh, has caused some traffic chaos and that there's been flash flooding and all of that sort of stuff. But, I mean, Cyclone Damien just ripped through Karratha and, and, and gave it, you know, tore it a proverbial. And, mm -hmm. you know, those, those of us who are familiar with North, Northern Territory wet season weather and far north Queensland wet season weather, this is, this is a lot of rain for Sydney and Brisbane and, and parts of New South Wales. But really, are we overreacting? Oh, look, um, in, at least in Brisbane and, and, and those areas today, it was very heavy rain. But I must admit, I've seen it heavier. And if you, look, I, yeah. I've lived in, in Darwin and in those areas. Look, it was it was barely a shower compared to what you might hit in Darwin <laughs> in the wet season up there. But but it does cause chaos. And look, and it's welcome rain. The real challenge, I guess, though? is that I mean, does how it much rain really cause we're, chaos. <laughs> Oh, look, a bit of flash flooding here. I know, uh, you know, some parts have, have lost power. And uh, I know my, my, I speak to my dad on the mobile a short time ago. He's lost power in uh, the outer western suburbs of Brisbane. Uh, but he's not too stressed about it. He welcomed the rain. And uh, he's more yeah. worried to make sure that there's enough rain that increase the, the levels of the dams. At this stage, it doesn't look like it's increased it too much. But there are areas of New South Wales and Queensland desperately needing this, this rain and be welcoming mm. this rain immensely. Putting aside the bushfire impact, uh, we want yes. to see that, that, those flows going into those dams. Yes. Erin, uh, this is the whole thing. This is the concurrent conversation around uh, the water infrastructure, if we want to call it that. There have been some spectacular pictures coming out, particularly out of New South Wales, uh, just incredible water flows and many, many people commenting, wouldn't it be great if that runoff was going into dams? Oh, wait, we don't have any. Mm. Isn't this a classic example mm. of, of the, the rationale behind investing in uh, greater investment in that water infrastructure in the dams? Oh, possibly, and if nothing else, this will be a catalyst for that conversation. Certainly, I know we've been talking about similar issues recently on this very show, um, but some of those yes. images were extraordinary of bike tracks being turned into quite dangerous flash floods, um, horses being taken away. It really, really is um, terrifying stuff. And you're right, it's just going all into the wrong place. So I hope that, you know, what's happened over this entire summer becomes a catalyst for these conversations that we need to have about how we redirect our funds, perhaps in a more efficient way. Um, and, you know, that relates to whether it's dams or whether it's energy supply um, or, or otherwise. So this has been a really important summer for us. Hasn't it just, and not for all, uh, sometimes those lessons are painfully learned. We'll be getting on to energy mm. a little bit later in the show. Caleb, another part of this story that I wanted to pull out, and this is certainly not the first time it's been mentioned, but just two months ago, the Bureau of Meteorology forecast that the eastern states could expect no significant rain mm. before April. Now, I, I, don't, I, don't wanna, I don't want to be too trite about that part of the puzzle because, you know, forecasters forecast. It's never 100% certain it's like a doctor's diagnosis as you always get a second opinion it's often incorrect uh, however i think the, the risky part is when the firm decisions are taken based on the fact based on a, on a diagnosis if you like or a forecast that was pretty grim when you think about it it was extremely grim and <clears throat> i mean of course we understand that the the bomb isn't always going to get it right i mean you've only got to look out the window sometimes to know that they are forecasting and that that comes with uh, getting things wrong occasionally but what they made was a pretty bold prediction that there would be no rain until april uh, and that uh, assessment that analysis has been used extensively 
over the last few months well, has, basically right. to justify mm. what, what people are talking about in terms of climate change and then when the whole uh, Greta Thunberg stuff fired up here and I mean th this is something that has been used by the uh, the climate change activists for months basically to say look we're in so much trouble it's not going to rain it will be hot forever um, it's simply not happened it, it has not happened mm. as was predicted now I'm willing to accept that the bomb didn't want to you know make things any worse than they should be but they got it wrong and they need to admit that they got it wrong and look at why they got it wrong I mean if you're making bold predictions like that they've been shown up uh, pretty heavily one might say well, I mean, as to why they got it wrong, maybe, is this just Mother Nature saying to everybody, hold my beer, look what I can do when I feel like it. Uh, there's a couple of other cracking front pages on this. Let's just take a quick look at the Newcastle Herald, an incredible picture there. Uh, the headline uh, being rain pain. There's an there's a incredible photo of a, a, a large tree, looks like a mature tree that's come down at a holiday park and that's some of that dangerous chaotic behaviour and look you know obviously it hasn't been a walk in the park but you know the, the world has not ended because we've had a we've had significant heavy rain over the weekend but that's an incredible picture there from the the Newcastle uh, Herald and the Daily Telly what a gorgeous picture on the front page of the Daily Telegraph the heaviest rain in three decades has killed off one of the state's most devastating fires uh, and is on the way to filling major dams and has offered this little chap, Archie Purse House, I think his name is, one of his first encounters with puddles on his station at Liverpool Plain. Scott, I'll leave you with this, the last word on this one. Isn't it amazing to think some kids have been born and have never seen rain, never seen puddles? That's just extraordinary. That's how bad this drought was. Oh. It's a wonderful thing to see that. I, uh, it's always those, those metrics. I remember when we were, we, I was uh, involved in a story when uh, children that were going to school had never seen New South Wales win the state of origin. So um, I remember that. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit like that in terms of... Um, oh, uh, it's like being a Fremantle supporter. Oh, well, like, well, exactly well, the same. Yeah. <laughs> I hear uh, but, you guys, uh, Look, Fremantle. it is extraordinary when you see this in terms of that. Yeah. But it's extraordinary when you see, um, you know, those young kids have never seen really decent rain at all. And, uh, and it's wonderful to see, you know, I, I feel sorry for the bombs sometimes. They are, as you say, that they make predictions. They don't make, you know, say this will definitely yeah. happen. I know here in Queensland, mm. the bomb, bomb gave a briefing to Cabinet in Queensland. And about three days later, in, this is in December, they had the, the most rain they'd had in terms of total for, for six months, <laughs> two days later. We've had heavy rains in January. Now we've had heavy rains in February. They've got it wrong. Um, I don't know why they've got it wrong, but uh, I'm sure someone will point out, uh, and there'll be lots of uh, column inches in papers pointing out that they did get it wrong over the next couple of days. Well, at the risk Thank of God sounding... They got it wrong. Yeah, exactly. Thank God they got it wrong. And at the risk of sounding somewhat provocative, not meaning to, or maybe I am, maybe it's because the science isn't in fact settled. Maybe it's not. Yeah.